A new year has started and whenever a new year starts I am creating a new photo catalog. And this year I thought I would take you on this journey, I will take this opportunity to show you my photo management process end to end. Meaning from where and how I store my photos, how I manage my catalog, how I manage my first import of the photos after a photo session into my catalog and how the first skimming through a photos looks like, which I believe is one of the most important steps in photography, at least when it comes to my process. And then last but not least, I will walk you through my long-term archiving strategy. In order to do so, I created a series of three videos, of which this is the very first episode, and in this first episode we will cover the topic of where I store my photos and how I name the folders where I store the photos, down to how I manage my photo catalog or library, which in my case I will show you with Capture One. But rest assured, if you're using Luminar or Lightroom, for example, everything that you will see in this video and the other videos you can easily translate to uh, your own photo library software. There's nothing Capture One specific that I will be showing that you cannot do in most other photo management software. Without further ado, let's get started on where I store my photos. So where I store my photos is quite simple. I store all my photos throughout the year on one of these little SSD drives from SanDisk. They are USB SSD drives, very fast, very reliable and rugged and easy to carry around. And this is also already the very first advantage of these drives versus storing the photos on an internal drive in the laptop or the PC that I'm using. So the portability is this thing where I know that whenever I have this drive with me, I have all my photos with me, no matter if I will be using my PC or my laptop. So um, by having said that, what I also store here, other than just the photos, is the catalog. Again, in my case, it will be the Capture One catalog, but if I would be using Lightroom, which I did in the past, um, I would have my Lightroom catalog also on this drive. So that means when I switch from my PC to my laptop and I connect this USB drive, I will have all my photos and the library on the other machine. So I will never miss out also when I'm somewhere on the way and in a hotel, for example, and so on and so forth. The second advantage that this little drive gives me is that I am not too concerned with hard drive sizes in laptops or PCs at all, right? So whenever I buy a new laptop, for example, or a new machine in general, I just need enough space on those machines to install Capture One, uh, or if you prefer Adobe, um, of course, the Adobe Suite, and that's about it, or browser and so on and so forth. I'm not storing my creative um, content, right? Like the videos for YouTube, for example, or my photos, on those machines. I will always use these portable drives. So now that I've talked about where I store my photos, let me connect this little drive now to my machine here in my office and then we will switch over to um, my screen so that you can see the content of this drive and how I manage my photos. Here we now see my drive mounted to my PC and its contents. On top we see a folder called 2020. 2020 is the, the folder containing all the photos from last year. I haven't moved them to my archive yet. 2021 is my new folder that I'm planning to use uh, going forward now throughout the year and that we will be using throughout this video. Then I have a folder called export. Export is this folder that I'm using as a transition folder from Capture One into my long-term archive. Basically, it's that folder where I will export the photos to before I move them into their final place. Then I have a folder called portfolio. And portfolio is a folder that contains, in my case now, three folders. One is nature, street photography, and urban photography. Um, because here I capture photos that are important to me in those categories and that I want to quickly access if I'm looking for my favorite shots in those categories and I don't have to go through my long-term archive to find a specific shot. So basically my best shots will be in the portfolio and I'm keeping that as a running portfolio. And then last but not least, we have this folder called scans. Scans I'm using for um, scanning my own photos. I'm also doing analog photographies for those who are new to the channel. And whenever I scan photos, um, everything that comes from the scanner ends up in this folder before it then later gets 
um, put in the folder structure that I'm showing you in a second and then later import it into Capture One. But let's now go into the folder called 2021. So this is the folder that I will be using throughout this year and it contains three folders. And this is about it as simple as this. I have one folder called analog where you will see how I store my analog photos that I'm shooting on film. One folder called digital where you will find everything and where I will be storing everything that I will be shooting this year with digital cameras, be it phones or uh, my Leica MD or any other digital camera. And then we have the Capture One folder, which is Capture One's catalog. So if you're not using Capture One, but Luminar or Lightroom, this would be the location where I would put the Lightroom or Luminar catalog, for example, and use it also on this thumb drive. Let's first start with digital. So the way how I'm storing photos in this catalog is basically I'm creating folders where I will be using the date in the beginning of the folder name and then I will be giving that photo shoot a specific name. So this was now an iPhone 12 Pro testing shoot, for example, and I will be using this file naming structure throughout the year now. So whenever I'm doing a shooting, I would use the date of that shooting and then a name of the shooting. Now, if you have another more sophisticated system, of course, where you do commercial work, for example, where you give each shooting a specific ID number that you manage in another database, I would also include that here. Uh, but in my case, I don't do that. So um, the date is enough for me. And if we go back to the 2021 folder and then switch to analog, you see a slight modification when it comes to um, film. So in the case of film, I um, shot two roles that I developed this year already, and I put them here. Um, and here I would put the role number. This is like this ID number I just mentioned uh, in the digital case when you have another second catalog. Um, so in my case, it's the role number from the folder where I have the hardware negatives here that I always know in that hardware folder where I have the negatives, the corresponding files on my archive. And then again, the date and where the shooting was. And also as an addition here, I would use um, the film type because compared to digital photos, for example, I will not have EXIF information when it comes to um, which film was used. It's not in a file name itself. Whereas when you use a digital camera, you have all kinds of information in the raw files or the JPEG files through the EXIF information. So this is about it when it comes to files. So everything that I will be shooting this year, I will putting or I will be putting into these folders going forward again, just using the date or the roll numbers for analog. Let's now jump into Capture One so I can show you the catalog. Here we now see how my catalog looks in Capture One. On the left side, you basically see a mirror of what you've just seen on the file manager, we see the 2021 folder, we see the analog folder containing the two film rolls that I have developed and scanned already this year, and my first digital folder. And that's basically it. You don't see anything from 2020 here, and um, this is exactly the goal. I want to have each year one catalog and only see the photos that I've seen or shot throughout this year and everything else will be stored in last year's and previous catalogs. As you can see, I try to keep things very simple in my process. My Capture One catalog is pretty much a mirror of my file system, nothing more. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, so first of all, I wanna be independent of the catalog. So that also means that I do not import files physically into the Capture One library, uh, nor did I do that with um, Lightroom. So I personally think if you wanna be flexible in either moving from one tool to the other or or using multiple tools on the same set of photos, I would not use a catalogs or tools proprietary database to import the photos and take them away from the file system. So that is one part of the philosophy. And uh, the other is, yeah, over time, um, I migrated from Picasa to Lightroom, from Lightroom to Capture One, and I've seen the troubles I had with certain behaviors I had in the past when I managed or how I managed my photos. And what you've seen in today's video and in the next two videos is basically where I am now. Um, and I'm trying to share what I've learned over the years uh, when managing my photos. Having said that, 
I would also like to hear from you what you think of this first part and how I manage uh, my software. Um, also, if you have any tips or tricks for me um, with regards to the philosophy that I'm pursuing and what you've seen in this video, I'm happy to learn from you. In um, the next episode, we will go into Capture One and I will show you on one of the rolls of film that I developed how I quickly bring down those 36 shots down to the most essential photos that I will be then further editing and how I get rid of the vast majority of the photos um, so that I can be supported in my creative process and not constantly have to look at thousands of photos but just have the essential photos and I will explain to you in that video why I think it is so important. I hope you learned something in today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did so, please consider hitting the like button. If you love this type of content and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please also consider subscribing to the channel. I would highly appreciate it. But what I appreciate a lot today is that you watched this video and were here with me today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.